Hi, everybody. It's me, Eowyn, your forest self, and we are here for our second uh, video interview for our member of the week. This week, we're super excited to have Sandy, and I meant to ask you beforehand how you pronounce your last name, because I actually don't know if it's Paddock or, I don't know. You so have, you'll have oh, to, you have Paddock? Paddock? Okay. Paddock, yep. Yeah. Sandy Paddock, um, <laughs> she is one of our newer leaders and she will tell us more about the projects that she's involved in in a little bit here. Um, but thank you for joining me. Thanks um, for having so me. I'm excited to chat with you for a little bit here and help other wiki traders get to know you a little bit better too. Um, and who's your little friend in the corner? Yeah, so you can see little Lolo photo bombing. <laughs> it's nap time. <laughs> she's very cute. So we'll just jump in um, with an easy one, which is when and how did you get interested in genealogy? I was really, really lucky. Um, I can't say my favorite uncle, in case any of my other uncles see this, but one <laughs> of my favorite uncles would actually go door to door to people's houses in the town where my entire family kind of came from on my maternal side and go door to door and everybody knew everybody. So they welcomed him in and he would just ask them questions about their history, get a little bit of tidbits and write down their names, their kids and connect the dots all the way back through. When I would go back and visit him during the summers, I would go with him. So I had no clue what I was doing. I thought I was just going door to door because every door we went to had some type of cake. <laughs> so <laughs> they love to feed you. So I just kept going, but the stories were fascinating. They would sit there and chat with you. They would talk and, and it was just, it was just to me, history. Yeah. That's really cool. And cake. I mean, how can and you cake. go on with history and cake? No, a little kid. Yeah. Um, so what are some of your interests outside of genealogy? Well, I would say, uh, there are a couple really strong ones. Those that know me uh, know that huge hockey fan. My husband oh, and really? I go to the local hockey team that's uh, we're down in Atlanta, and uh, that our NHL team left three times. So we're Rude. we're with minor league hockey, but we're season ticket holders for many many years. So hockey, you'll see me on Discord. I'll say hockey night. You know that's where I'm at. In nice. camping, we restored many years ago a vintage airstream and we completely oh, cool. restored it gutted it and brought it back to life and then when my son was able to drive we restored a small aristocrat trailer so we like to go camping and I'm pretty I'm pretty picky about things so I made sure it was really glamped up <laughs> and really nice and then crochet I learned it from my grandmother and wow. still do it very cool yeah, I keep meaning to learn crochet, but I haven't yet. I need to get my mom to teach me. Definitely, because that's what makes it special when it's handed Yeah, down. Yeah, it's like I feel like I could watch YouTube videos and learn, but it's not quite the same as having your mom or grandma teach you. Yep. So, mom, if you're watching. <laughs> uh, you. what, yeah, what would you say is your genealogy research focus? I think my focus always remains in West Virginia. That's where my family's from. That's where I partially grew up from. I, you think that you would build out a tree and you would be done. Like a couple, couple ancestors, a couple grandparents, you'd be done. You're not. You're still digging for that uh, rich history, the biographies, the newspaper articles, and also going more horizontal than just vertical. So it it pretty much stays there in West Virginia. The the exception is is now that I am in Georgia, adopted Georgia as my new home state for the last twenty years. The province of Georgia, when mm -hmm. Georgia became Georgia, is really a a hardcore focus for me right now too. Very cool. Are there any um, specific surnames that you are interested in or researching? I still always, always, always research my beloved Bonners, my maternal yeah. side. My Bonners are are like my people. I talk to them. They talk to me. They're not giving me a lot of details that I want, though, at times, but <laughs> hey, we still do it. And then uh, my Craig side, uh, I'll, I'll research that 
not as heavily as the Bonners, but if you're from West Virginia and if you're watching this, you will know that if I'm researching the Bonners, I'm researching the Hamrick, Gregory, and Dodgers and Bonners. Those four names go hand in hand. So mm -hmm. that's pretty much my name, surname focus. Nice. Do you have a favorite ancestor? Or I do. And she she's a Bonner by marriage, actually. She's my third, I believe, third great-grandmother. Yeah. And her name is Sarah Ann Folks, married Samuel Bonner. And Samuel fought in the War of 1812. Actually, he uh, was paid to fight in the war. Somebody that was a lot more richer didn't want to fight. When he died, he was supposed to be given some land, a land grant for fighting, but they could not prove that he fought for in the war for, or even for this person. And the other person had long passed away. She fought for 15 years to get this land grant, never gave up. And she's in West Virginia fighting this and all the records and the attorneys are in Washington, DC. She does not know how to write. So every time wow. she fills out, there's an application filled out from the lawyer or her son. She writes a big X by her name. Wow. So for 15 years, she's done the tremendous, a treasure trove of information came from this. And uh, she spent like $25, probably four times a year, way back wow. in the late 1800s when money wasn't really there. <laughs> Sadly, three months after she died, the land oh. grant came through. Oh, <laughs> but I will tell you, it is the most beautiful land you've ever seen. It's right on the Elk River in West Virginia. We go back there many times to fly fish. And it's just beautiful land. So I, I, I'm i grateful that she fought for it. Yeah, for 15 years. That's some dedication right there. That's so you right. guys, you guys, the land is still in your family and you can still go and we, we do and we don't is it was sold off so many times in patches and patches. So the land that the family owns is it's more my uncle, my two uncles own is a very small area, but uh, the cemetery, the Bonner Cemetery is still there and we own that land. Oh, that's really cool. That's nice. Um, how about a favorite genealogical discovery? Oh, that one's tough. Uh, oh, that one's, uh, I would say probably finding a uncle, my maternal side, my uh, mother's father, my grand, my maternal grandfather was unknown. And my grandmother took that information to her grave. Yeah. And we, we knew that he had remarried, but we didn't know anything really about where, who, and out of the blue a couple of years ago, because I had put information about this gentleman and a lot of detail in WikiTree, his daughter was trying for Father's Day to do the same thing, try and find out information about this father oh, wow. that he never knew because the father died, I think, when he was about six months old. Oh. So he's like, hey, sends me a message to WikiTree, hey, who are you? And why do you know my dad? And I'm like, I think you're my uncle. So that was kind of cool. And it wouldn't That's happen really cool. if it wasn't WikiTree because he's not paying for right. family genealogy and WikiTree is free. Yeah, that is that is super cool. No, yeah. I love those kind of stories. Um, so how long have you been on WikiTree? This is interesting. I've been on since about March 2016, so yeah. about seven years, and this is really cool. I love this. I, I just discovered this this week. Mags is the one that was my greeter, Aww, how fun! I just greeted Mags in the Appalachia Project this week. Oh, so I feel circle. like it's the turnabout, so I love that. That's really cool. Yeah, she's awesome. Um, so how did you find WikiTree or what brought you, what brought you to the site? Do you remember? I do. It, I, mine might be unique or it might not be unique. I have, uh, as a, pro, a professional genealogist, and I had clients that would do the DNA test through a different uh, online program, but they didn't want to pay the, the fees to continue being a member. They just wanted to find out the DNA. So as I'm managing their DNA 
at the time I was like, I have to find a way where I can easily recreate this tree so they can always see it for free. And I didn't want to build out my own personal web page to have all these family trees for all the clients I ever have. Just did a, a web search and found WikiTree extremely quick. And the very first client I had, I remember I just started building out the tree. I didn't build my own tree out. I built their tree out first nice. and they loved it and they stayed. Oh. tree as well so that's cool and they continued building out more horizontal they added their children and things and their brothers and sisters and things like that so it's a great way for professional genealogists as well to yeah. use this because it's there it's all there and you can get involved in it it, it was just awesome it's just perfect opportunity that's very cool um what would you say you spend the most time doing on wiki tree Research, probably looking, looking at things, looking at uh, who I can add to this week. I've been uh, trying to attach myself to one of the high or the highest tree topper patio oh, plant. Yes. <laughs> so I've been trying to, we, we've both been working, trying to see if I can just latch on at the CC6 level for her. Mm -hmm. So then I can bump up my CC7 number. Um, but it mostly that and creating profiles pretty much for, for a couple of different projects. So what projects are you the most involved in? This is funny. Nobody laugh at this one. I'll hold the I'll hold the real answer at the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I love ambassadors. Ambass I'm always uh, I'm always on Twitter. You can always find me on Twitter. So I'm always sharing uh, the ambassadors, uh, everything they do every day. And recently, uh, I had my own one place studies. So recently joined one place studies. I love that because I love the history. I love learning yeah. of the different areas and the history. If it's, if it's history and travel, I'm there. You're there. I, I, I mean, that's probably my favorite. I really like the disasters project. I like specifically the coal mine disasters because that plays into the next project that I'm going to mention, which is my love, is the Appalachia project. So yeah. you, you will find- you spend you spend a few minutes in that one, right? Just a few. I try to find at least two minutes every day <laughs> to do something with Appalachia. But that's my love. And, and I got to tell you that uh, I learn something new from the members every day. They're awesome. They're happy. And yeah. we love to talk about biscuits. <laughs> so. I do. Like, you're a very chatty, happy, helpful, friendly project. Like, we are. And you do talk about biscuits a lot, I've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're the you you co-lead Appalachian right mm -hmm. yeah I and it's an interesting story because Steve Harris who is the manager of projects with WikiTree had a webcast that said hey would you like to do a project start one here's how it's so easy do it and I've been sitting on this project the name for about two years I thought about it during COVID yeah I had some changes going on you know, with my own business, I couldn't go to courthouses. I couldn't go to certain places because of COVID. Sure. So I said, you know what? He just gave me permission to go ahead and do that. So I started Appalachia with just a little old space page. Way to do it. Yep. You've had several that have grown from space pages into like really functioning, you know, ones with lots of members helping out. Be brave. I, I think like you, like Wiki Tree says, be bold. Start be bold. a space page. Started up, you never know. Um, so for that project in particular, how um, how can other people help with it? Where think, where do you need volunteers for it? I think what we really need is we need volunteers that are in different areas of Appalachia. A lot of people think only West Virginia is Appalachia. Some people might think Tennessee and some Kentucky, but it actually goes all the way up into uh, New York. So most of Pennsylvania. New York, and it goes all the way down into Georgia, where I, I'm actually in North Georgia, where Appalachia ends. I'm the Southern County in Appalachia for Georgia, but it goes into Alabama, Mississippi. So we really would like to see people join that have that Southern or that very Northern New York or Ohio or Pennsylvania and add their ancestors and add their profiles. Very cool. 
Um, so what inspires you to contribute so much of yourself to Wikitree's mission? I would say truly, I want my own people to have a place where everybody can see them. I, it, it's really, really important to me that some of my ancestors are known and and seen as well. Yeah. And I think that almost every project or every person that digs into their family tree, you just have this this feeling in your heart and your gut that these are your people and yeah. you're proud of them. And, and some you're not proud of. And you want you want to explain why you're not proud of what they did. Everybody has a story. And I just felt like in other places, sometimes the the names were getting wrong, the parents were wrong or the children were wrong. You know, people get real crazy about pictures, things like that. And I just found that WikiTree was just a safe haven for my ancestors to be seen. I love that. So what's your favorite feature or function on WikiTree and why? I've got a few, you know, I really, really love where you bring up a profile and it shows you the degrees and how mm -hmm. close you are and you bring up a profile and it will show you, oh, this is your second cousin two times removed and it'll tell you where and how. Yep. But the one that I really use the most is if you go to most of the category, I think all category pages, maybe I'm not sure at the top right is a big green button. This is my connections. And I will find random <laughs> categories and click that button to see <laughs> who I'm closest to in a page. We use it in Appalachia so we can all see who we're closest to. Yeah. But um, I will do it in cemetery categories because <laughs> I want to know who I'm closest to because that's also going to help my CC7. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, it's a great way to find connections. I love that too. I, and I do, you know, I like to go to just totally random categories. Yeah. Just to see, like, who's who am I closest to here? Um, what what feature do you think we'd like to see added or improved? Oh, I've got a really easy one. It's yeah. been asked a couple of times, I think. I don't know what how you would call this feature, so I'll explain it, it. And you tell me what it's called. If you go into a profile and you hit the edit, and then you scroll down to the bottom, and on the right, it has the parents listed with the wiki tree link already there. If we could just put the word and in between the mom and the dad, I would love it. Because then I could copy the whole thing and, and put it up into the profile. <laughs> it sounds silly, but I'm telling you, it would be fabulous if we had that. I have seen that mentioned before. <laughs> um, do you have a story about how um, someone, how you were helped by someone else's participation in WikiTree? I, I do, but I want to share with you my, my husband. I convinced him to do WikiTree. And yeah. he will occasionally do thons. If he wants to see me that weekend, he will do the thon. <laughs> um, really, the coolest one is his. And Secret Santa that just ended a couple months ago, he was stuck at his great-grandmother who we couldn't determine if it was she's from Austria or Hungary because of the time frame and an elf picked up his secret Santa wish and expanded out his tree by four generations which is cool Whoa. which is very very cool and, and amazing because we never thought we would get there but she also found a picture of the house where his great-grandmother was born and lived wow and that just I mean I I have not met her. Met her. She, by the time I met my husband, she'd already passed, but he has very fond memories of her. Oh, and wow. um, it just, to see a big, big guy, he's a big Marine, to see a big guy just kind of look and, and, and get the feels over that was awesome. That is awesome. The secret Santa was great. <laughs> Way to go, Elf. Yeah. Um, do you have any tips for someone who wants to get more involved in the WikiTree community? I think... I used to say join a project and I, and I still think joining a project and, and try joining them slowly. Don't, don't pick up 10 at a time. Try doing right. it. Slowly. I think that is, is still a good thing to do, but I like something a little bit better. Watch the live cast. You'll see who, who 
through the people you're going to ask questions and need help from, you'll see them and they give help. We have such great uh, uh, live casts every month. Les does his technical one. We have every Saturday, the Saturday roundup, where we talk about things that are going on, what's going to be coming up next, the question of the week where people share. And you get to know these people, you get to know these names and they become familiar with you. So I really think watch these live casts, play bingo. I forgot that one, play bingo, Friday night, date night, they alternate each other because you get to know the people that are wiki treers. And I think that'll make you feel a little bit more comfortable jumping in. Yeah. It's nice to be able to see people's faces for one. It is. And then you can learn. It's, it's, they're kind of like easy ways to learn. It's not intensive. It's not, you know, super structured. It's you learn just by being present. And I think you, cool. you start to think of, of them as friends and you come yeah. to look forward to, for example, the Saturday roundup, you come to look forward to it and, mm -hmm. and you wonder what's going to happen this week. What am I going to learn this week? What are they going to tell me? And it's just comfortable. It's casual. It's, it's like sitting over your morning coffee. So I think that's an easy way to ease in to what yeah. That's good. I like that. Um, and what do you think we could do to inspire more people to participate in our mission? You know, I don't think that WikiTree is ever going to have the Super Bowl commercials. I, right. Because we're free, right? Yeah. <laughs> we're a free website. So, so that's like, you know, so I think social media, I think social media is the number one idea right now to go out and reach out to the social medias that are out there. But I think Every project leader also has a responsibility to keep their people involved and then ask their people to recruit people. Because if, yeah. if you're in a project, for example, in the Appalachia project, it could be your cousin, it could be your neighbor, it could be your friend, you're, you're living in Appalachia. So those people will find that topic interesting. If you're in a particular genealogy group, the Huguenots, you know, that's an interest that you have for crew. You, yeah. A lot of times, especially over COVID, we, we had meetings over Zoom and it's perfect. So recruit others to come in. But I think as a project leader, we need to start that conversation. Yeah, I like that. And we rely on that quite a bit, the word of mouth, because it is free. Mm -hmm. And so Wikitree is sharing about Wikitree is one of the biggest draws to get people to come and join the site for sure. And, and then share share the webcast, share share the, the Friday night, date night, the bingo join a thon. Start slow, yeah. join a thon and that a one that you're interested in. If you're interested in a particular country or topic, that's the best place because I know for our thons, we do Team Virginia. In our thons, we all help each other. Somebody's stuck, we help each other. If you've got a question, we help each other. We, you know, share virtual cookies, <laughs> we do everything. So you start to become mm. familiar with and you become WikiTree friends, and that encourages you. Anytime somebody enjoys something, it encourages you to keep going. Yeah, that is like the enthusiasm that WikiTreeers have for WikiTree is contagious for mm -hmm. sure. So, well, awesome. It was great to get to know a little more about you, Sandy. And I'm excited that you're, you know, part of WikiTree family and everything that you do. Keep doing the good stuff. Well, thanks. I love it. And I guess I'll see everybody around the tree. Yep. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye.